first off, I thank you guys so much for keeping such close tabs on FPV Cycle. I often don't even have the chance to make content around the new things that we have because it just sells out so quickly. But you may have noticed that motors are actually not sold out because we had, have been getting very, very large batches of things now that we can sort of afford it, almost. We still can't really afford much. But as long as you guys keep supporting the store, we're going to keep moving ahead and making new things. And we are working on a couple of motor technologies now that are genuinely different than anything seen in our industry. Some of these technologies are used in other industries, but we have, for some, I have no idea why we haven't seen it in our industry. Also, I want to point out that Real Steady Go is having a cinematic video competition and the prize pool is really, really nice. And FPV Cycle will be donating an additionally nice prize pool to the pot as well. And I only point that out now because I'm very late in, I was supposed to make a video on this a couple days ago. I just have been so backed up, so, so backed up. So I mention it now because the competition has already started and uh, I want you guys to have a maximum amount of time. But I am gonna be making a dedicated video about that competition a little bit later. This video is gonna, fo is gonna focus more on voltages and when you go up in voltage on your quad. There has been a movement lately to 6S everything and I've done plenty of testing on higher voltages. I don't recommend 6S on everything and I, it's, I'm making this video because I, I get an unusually high number of, of uh, questions and, and direct messages about how to run 6S on a Cinewhoop or a 2 inch or a 2.5 inch or sometimes manufacturers will say, oh, look how awesome this 6S toothpick quad is. When I try to tell them that my 3S toothpick quads are going to be just as fast as whatever that is in that video and it's going to run for way longer. So should you really 6S everything? Before continuing, I would like to point out that I am not an engineer. I have taken a lot of physics classes, but that's just physics classes in school. I have learned a lot of things through this industry and talking to a lot of engineers within our industry, but I am not an engineer. A lot of this information comes from Ryan Harrell, talking, to things, talking about things with Ryan Harrell. He is a wealth of knowledge. He's the guy that runs Mini Quad Test Bench. He is really a pillar in our community, as well as talking to a lot of engineers at a lot of these companies. And so I'm just gonna be kind of regurgitating all this stuff. And I have made videos in the past talking about very intricate details of things that a lot of this stuff was wrong. The more you learn, the more you learn you don't know. And so this is just a progression of what I am learning and I'm just kind of sharing as much as I can about the things that I, I sort of kind of know. And this video is really more about food for thought and maybe it'll help drive the direction the next time you build a quad. So before continuing, let's look at this particular quad. So this quad here in front of you, it's the uh, PowerPick 5 inch. The canopy is very ugly. I know the build is very ugly. I just built it to test things. This is the, again, 5 inch version. It has the new drivetrain on it that we have at FPV Cycle. It's got the, um, the very cheap $37, uh, 30 amp Ford 4S uh, toothpick board in there with the 2203 3450KV motors. And before continuing, I'd like to point out that this frame, which is coming very soon, it's the 4-Ride in 5-inch is running the exact, exactly the same drive, exactly the same drivetrain with the same exact motors and the 5-inch 5125 uh, props from Genfan and it flies beautifully on 4S with zero, zero issues. It's totally default, totally stock on the same exact Betaflight 4.1.5 firmware. So let's take a look at this and see what happens when we plug it in on 4S and... <clears throat> Power it up and see what it does. So I'll turn on all the controller and everything. <clears throat> and so you might think that 3450 kV is a little bit high for 5 inch, and it is, but I don't have any props in here. So let's uh, forget about that because I've proven already with the quad on the right that this works great. <clears throat> let's see what happens. So this is 4S. Here's the controller. I'm, I'm just going to arm it and throttle up a little bit. Armed, throttling up a little bit. Okay, so you don't want to let it do that for too long, but you could hear the jittering. Let's try it again. 
Okay, you, you definitely don't want to let it do that for too long because the motors are now very, very hot because it is just grinding the motors. And immediately, pretty much everybody will think this is something to do with the filters. Yeah, I think the same thing, except for the fact that this is Betaflight 4.1.5 and I have jacked the filters up to max. That slider, that filter slider, it's all the way up. It's all the way to the left, maximum filtration. filtration. Let's see what happens when I take the same exact quad and run it on 3S. So this is now 3S. And this is totally default tuned. PIDs are totally default, but that really doesn't have any issue, any um, effect on the oscillations that you are seeing. But again, same thing. You're going to arm. You can hear the P's are a little high, but there is drastically reduced functional problems with the quad. So why is that? Well, I'm actually not going to explain why is that at all in this particular video because that's not the point of this. But what I wanted to show here is just the difference between 4S and 3S on this quad and how higher voltages can potentially cause a lot of really frustrating issues. And they're not impossible to solve, but they do take a lot of time to figure out and solve. In this case, if I had black box on this quad, I could probably just tune the filters and it'll be totally cool. But instead of, but I don't have black box. So instead of doing that, I'm just gonna just jump around the different uh, firmware versions, particularly go down to 3.5.7, see if that works. If that, doesn't, if that doesn't work, jump to Emu Flight. And try, then if that doesn't work, then I'll just try using the tools at my disposal to get the quad to fly the way I want it to. All these firmwares fly great. I'm not even gonna talk about the different firmwares right now, but that's my way of tuning things because, uh, well, I don't have black box on this quad, first of all, and second of all, because it works. <laughs> it works, and I can pretty much get all the different firmwares to fly to my liking. I spend more time kind of getting the quad to be the setup that I want and the way I want it to be rather than getting this perfect tune in the code because all of them can fly well and I can fly, I can tune all of them, but I choose not to work so hard. So that's just one reason why you may not want to jump to 6S immediately because you can run into a heap of issues which are many more issues than what I presented here. But let's just put that aside and look at this chart here that I've written. So if you take a look at this chart, I've got my batteries <clears throat> and KV numbers on here. So back when we first started flying these things, we were on 3S. And first, when we first started doing FPV, like for when I first started, things were on 3S. Then we moved to 4S. And the 1300 milliamp 4S battery became the default. And then we moved to 1500 milliamp 4S batteries because our quads got a little bit heavier, got a little bit more powerful, and so we needed a little bit more battery. And some people started running 1600, 1650 milliamps. I think a Thunder Power had a 1900 milliamp battery that was almost the same weight as a 1500 milliamp 4S battery. And we just kept trying to go up a little bit just to get a little bit more capacity, get a little bit more current out of the battery. And that's kind of where we, we ended it and gave up. When we started running 6S, we immediately started running a minimum of 1,000, really 1,100, and then the racers started running 1,300 milliamp 6S batteries. If you compare the capacities of these batteries, a 1,300 milliamp 4S battery con converts the same watt hours to an 866 milliamp 6S battery. There, there isn't a person out there that would even care to run 866 milliamp 6S batteries on any 5-inch quad. It just doesn't make any sense. Even though I have a 550 milliamp 6S and I do actually use it here and there, it doesn't make sense to have made a battery like that. And by the end of this, I hope you will understand why. So 1500 milliamp becomes a 1000 milliamp 6S battery. And so this Pulse 1050 has been my preferred battery for a long time on my 5-inch Acro quads because it's a really nice lightweight and it dishes out the amps really nicely, and it's a really nice happy medium, and it's really comparable to the 4S 1500 milliamp that I used to run. And so now my current favorite battery, or my current preferred battery, is the 1100 milliamp 6S battery. And that works out to a 600, 1650 milliamp 4S battery. So I have actually gone up in my overall watt hour capacity, not capacity, just overall power, power amount of power in the battery because my quads are now heavier and I've got a GoPro Hero 8 on there, lots of TPU, well not lots, just a big TPU casing for the Hero 8 and all that jazz and I, and I just need more power on the quad to be able to give me the, the 
current that I want and the, the, the voltage and flight time that I need to be able to do what I do. Now racers running 1300 milliamp 6S batteries, well, I hope by the end of this it makes more sense why that just sounds crazy to me and I know why they're doing it and they're not wrong for doing it. I mean, there's, just no, there's no right or wrong, but I, don't, I wouldn't say don't do it. It's just crazy that they need to do it for the setups that they're running. But now let's flip it over and take a look at the KV numbers. So when we first started running these things, 2300 KV was kind of the default on 4S. And then we slowly kind of creeped up higher and higher. We went up to like 26, 2700. And we kind of had settled at this happy medium around 2500, 2550 KV on 4S is really kind of the default where people like, you know, there's a wide range of what people prefer. But if, if there was one KV I would choose on 4S, it would be 2500 KV. When you convert 2500 KV to 6S, that's 1666 KV. And I've tested 1666 KV on 6S and it's, it's awful. It's, it's just the quietest, it feels like it's stuck in second gear. It's terrible. It's usable and you, you might wanna try putting a heavy prop on there and get more thrust or more whatever out of it. But it's not the same as 2500 on 4S. That's very clear to anybody that tests these two side by side. You can definitely tell a difference and you can definitely tell that the 6S quad is not gonna be as fast as the 4S if all things are equal. Not like a 6S racer on 1666 versus an acro quad on 4S 2500. The exact same quad with the exact same motors just rewound to a different KV on 6S with this KV is not going to perform quite as well as the 4S version. And I'll kind of explain why in a minute. But then we started creeping up to 1750 on 6S, and my preference on 6S is actually around 1880, 1875 to 1880, 1900 starts getting a little bit high. So if you look at my preference and convert that down to 4S, that's 2820 KV on, on 4S. And I would never run 2820 KV on 4S. It's just way too high for my per personal taste the way I fly. There's a lot of preference in here. I'm just showing you numbers, just moving back and forth. I, it's annoying that I even have to mention this over and over, but please, please, I'm just presenting these numbers. I'm not presenting what you should do, what you shouldn't do. You can do whatever you want. Just kind of share information here. And so let's take a look at how an electromagnet works and then look at these numbers again and see what we think about why we're running these weird 6S capacities and these weird 6S KVs and why they're different and why they don't just convert directly. So the way an electromagnet works is by you got you got a, an iron core here core here the line here in the middle is an iron core and then you have these wraps that go around the stator pole if, if you've opened the motor you know that there's you know all these different stator poles around the motor and so what happens is this is connected to a battery or some sort of power source and electrons will flow through these coils and this is might be a little bit complicated if you don't already know it but a moving electron creates a magnetic field and it doesn't create it in the direction that it's moving. It kind of creates it in a circular pattern around the wire. So I'm, I'm not going to explain that. I'm just going to assume that you know that already. But what happens here is that the, the electrons go around in circles and circles and they all come together and create a magnetic field going through the coil on in either which direction. And that's how the magnetic field gets generated. And then that pushes and pulls against the magnets on the, on the motor bell, and then it spins the motor around and around. So if you take a look at this electromagnet, because that's all it is, it's an electromagnet, the iron core also, it, uh, I'll talk about that later, but this electromagnet, the way that you get a magnetic field is by moving electrons. Like that's just, that's, the default way to get a magnetic field in an electromagnet. It's not by increasing voltage, it's by moving electrons. And so the way to get the maximum magnetic field from this electromagnet is to have infinite current at zero volts, which would mean that your winds or whatever the, the conductive medium that's wrapping this, this stator or this pole or this, this core has perfect conductance, it's a superconductor, and uh, there is no heat loss, there's nothing, it's just maximum current, maximum electrons flowing through this thing. So that right there is really all you need to explain a lot of this other stuff, except for a little bit of a tidbit at the end. So 
by moving up in voltage and reducing the KV of the motor, what we're doing is that we're taking a system that is running on lots of current, dropping that current way down and jacking up the voltage. I had to pause real quick to do some quick math here. So we just finished saying how current is what generates magnetic field. And so let's look at current at 4S, which let's say a system that has 100 amps at 4S, and then let's convert it to 6S. That same system, same wattage overall power throughput at 6S is gonna be 66 amps. So by moving to 6S, and dropping the KV to the equivalent KV, not just, just dropping it, just the equivalent. So as in 2500 4S, 66S, what we're doing is we are essentially dropping our current by a third, which means that we're gonna have a third less current going through the coils, which means we're gonna have a third less magnetic field. Our magnetic field is literally going to be cut into a third. So people talk about how 6S has so much torque. Uh, Clearly, I've demonstrated here just by logic of science that, that that's not true. Success does not have torque. But again, hold on. This is kind of going to turn around at the end a little bit. But this is, I'm showing you that torque or magnetic field, because that's what generates the torque, is directly proportional to the current moving through the winds not the voltage. And so let's look at voltage and let's look at all these numbers again because what's happening here? When we move to 6S, we are increasing the comparative KV, but why? Well, it's because we need that current. So we need higher KV to drive more current. And if we need more current, then we need more battery. And so we are in this cycle where it's sort of never ending ish, somewhat kind of. I mean, when are we going to be happy with what we've got? And do we really need the 6S? And I'll talk about if you really need it. Or I'll explain when I think you actually need to go up in voltage at the end. But now that we see that there is a disconnect going on here, let's look at these lines here. And I'm just going to draw them again. So if we just pretend that this is a graph and let's just pretend map the torque curve arbitrarily totally arbitrary totally artistic rendition of a 4s motor that 4s system if that torque curve looked like this and i don't know if i did all this math correctly listen to more of the concept i'm sorry if i did it incorrectly i didn't mean to <laughs> but if that torque curve looked like this then the torque curve on 6s would look something sort of like that. It's gonna be more curved. And that might be immediately confusing to you because it is confusing because I haven't explained the other component of this, which is voltage. So what ends up happening is that at lower currents, you have less torque. So that's why this lower segment of the 6S curve is lower than the torque of the 4S because you have less torque in the lower RPM range. But as you go up in RPM, what ends up happening is that voltage starts to take effect. And voltage doesn't do nothing. It does something. It's got to do something. But current is the primary way that we create magnetic fields. So voltage does something. And what it does is it pushes the electrons through harder. So as you go up in current, the voltage starts taking over and pushing the electrons harder and harder. And that's why the torque starts pouring on faster and faster as you go up in the RPM range. So now when we backtrack and take a look at the KV numbers and we look at the increased KV numbers, now it makes sense. The reason why we are increasing our comparative KV is because we need to get that current back in order to recreate similar torque numbers as 4S to be able to drive the motor higher and higher and have it feel like it's got some more power. But 
because we have higher KV numbers, we are also getting more RPM out of the motor. We are actually getting more power out of the system. However, now we need more battery to drive that system because we have a higher powered system. So now you, you see this full disconnect and what going to higher voltages does is that it just shifts the torque higher in the RPM range and it makes everything feel a lot less linear actually. And this is the reason why, at least I believe, this is my best theory as to why 6S feels so different compared to 4S and why 4S just feels so nice to fly. And then you move to your 6S quad and you're like, eh, sure, there's no battery sag, but it doesn't really feel as nice to fly as the 4S. And that is the primary advantage of 6S. So this is a third loss in, in current and it's a third loss in torque. And so in reality, it's not actually gonna be a third loss. So what, what ends up happening is that we're increasing the KV. So we're actually making up a good deal of the current and torque by just increasing the KV. And then we are uh, using a higher voltage and the battery has an electrochemical advantage in the sense that it's not needing to push so much current and our comparative capacities are so much higher that it has an easier time dealing with the current. And so we get this electrochemical advantage where we just don't see voltage drops. So as you go up in the RPM and in, in the um, desired power that you're asking of the quad, the battery has an easier time maintaining its voltage. So you just get more current out of that system as well. And so all in all, you kind of sort of start to get to the point where it's essentially no real loss in performance or torque or any of that stuff. But it still feels better when you fly 4S. And this is, this is, this I hope is obvious now why 5S is kind of like a happy little medium because it kind of has the best of both worlds. You have the improved voltage stability of an extra cell with the reduced current requirements of that battery and you might increase the capacity a little bit but you don't lose as much of the current which is what you need to get you the torque now why do you even need to go up in voltage and like why aren't we running 1s on everything well the real reason is because we're limited by battery technology batteries just have problems in general. They just suck at deliver, delivering all the power and storing the power and doing everything. We're really in our infancy in batteries. And if you look at Tesla patents and the way they're making uh, new lithium ion batteries, that would be very clear to you. It's incredibly interesting. I highly recommend the limiting factor. Uh, it's a YouTube channel. The guy is a genius and he researches all the Tesla patents and how they're working on battery technologies and whatnot. And so it's just really interesting to follow. But battery technologies are the reason why we use higher voltages to begin with. But when do you actually need those higher voltages? Well, it's when you're pushing the battery past its limits and it just can't keep up anymore. That's when you need to move up in voltage. On five inch quads, it, you could run 3S, you could run 4S, you can run 5S, but, but lower voltage, which I'm not really gonna get into in this video, lower voltages with higher capacities are more efficient if for nothing else because this torque curve is higher at the bottom you get more torque at the lower rpm range out of a 4s system or a lower voltage system compared to a higher voltage system so the reason why racers are on 6s and why they're using 1300 milliamp 6s batteries which are ginormous by comparison is because number one they're pushing the quad to its absolute limits it's really like at the brink of explosion <laughs> and number two they need that voltage stability and because the quads are going so darn fast and the kvs are so high they need the capacity and so i've been testing racing quads again lately and uh, my preference is actually to reduce the battery size reduce the voltage a little bit and uh tone it back reduce the weight of the quad and bring it in balance. And what's special about the toothpick and like things like this and these super light class things is that they are just very well balanced for their power output. They, they can deliver the performance that you want consistently. The toothpick, the 3S toothpick is very light. It's got a relatively large capacity battery and it can deliver full throttle performance for a minute. And that's just because it has such a huge battery compared to what you're kind of asking the quad to do. So I'm not going to go too much further, but one comparison in the real world, which again, Tesla, because it's a great example of everything they're doing. The Tesla Roadster that's coming out is supposed to have like a 600 or 700 mile range. I suspect that's because 
they need all that battery to be able to provide the sustained performance that they want out of the car. So it's got insane numbers and an insane range for the same reason that the toothpick, the TP3, flies for like eight minutes if you want it to, or you could just get a lot of performance out of it for four minutes because it just needs that battery to be able to bring the power draw requirements into line so that the battery isn't being too stressed and causing electrochemical challenges inside the battery and reducing your overall flight time and performance and everything altogether and heating everything up and causing just issues altogether. So hopefully this was really actually good food for thought. Take care, floss your teeth. Uh, there's a couple of videos coming. They're, they're going to get really interesting. Bye.